Hey, it's Valley Radio. It's Robert Miguel here, and I've got some special guests on the phone. You've heard their songs here on uh, Uvalde Radio for the, the last couple of months. I'm real excited to talk to this entire family of musicians, Willow City. Thanks for having us, Robert. Yeah. All right, so so this is might be a little bit confusing because we got four. Are all four of you guys on the phone right now? We are. Yeah. <laughs> so so just to try to make some clarity here, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Say your name, uh, what you do in the band. All right. Okay. So I am Beecher. I'm the oldest brother, and I play electric and acoustic guitar, and then sing some lead vocals. All right. And then I'm second. I'm Ezra, and uh, I play acoustic guitar, keys. And do the I'm the primary songwriter of the group. Okay. And I'm Liza. I am third and the only girl in the group. I play bass and do some main vocals. Yes. And then I'm Asa. I am the youngest and I do mandolin and play drums. So. Well, first of all, congratulations for having that so together. I mean, you, you went in <laughs> you went in descending order. Yeah, you, you, you've definitely this ain't your first rodeo, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, so again, Willow City, and of course, you're all siblings. How do you pronounce your last name? I don't want to mess it up here. Yeah, no, this is Ezra. Our last name is Proach. Proach, okay, okay. All right. I would have got that right. That's awesome. Good. So, hey, that's it. That's your first. That would be. <laughs> so, now, of course, you know, um, you, the band name is Willow City. You guys are from Willow City, is that right? Yes, that's right. What's, you know, where is Willow City? Give us a little insight as to why you named the band that, and you know, I guess the inception of the group. So, we were uh, a couple years ago trying to come up with a band name, and we so we rebranded a couple years ago. We went for a while and kind of talked through some different options, some different names, and uh, we didn't want to use our last name because, like you mentioned, or like you could imagine, there are a million different pronunciations. Uh-huh. So we were really tired of like being of our last name being pronounced Crotch or Porch, or <laughs> so it got awkward real fast. So we were like, okay, no, this is. We got to use something different than our last name. So what can we use? So Willow City is this tiny, tiny little Texas town. We moved where we moved about ten years ago, right outside of Fredericksburg, Texas. Mm-hmm. And it's really we didn't start doing music until we moved close to Willow City. Um, and so one day our dad came in and he was like, "Hey, what if you just call the band Willow City?" And we we're like, "Hey, dang it! Why didn't we think of that?" <laughs> so anyway, we did, and we get to travel outside of Texas about two months a year or so and so it's fun because we get to tell people who don't live in texas about where we're from and how great texas is so yeah well let's be honest a lot of people in texas don't know willow city so you really you know you're, <laughs> yeah i you mean blink and you miss it there's about yeah. 30 people there <laughs> well i mean how cool is that i mean the city's got to be just enthralled that you guys are using their name and bringing porridge to the porridge so to speak you know kind of getting their name out there that's cool Again, we're talking. You know, we're talking to Willow City here. They're all siblings. Uh, give us your musical background. Are you? Did you come from a musical family? How did that all work out to where three brothers and a sister all happen to play instruments and be able to sing and get together this, this fabulous group? <laughs> yeah. So we all grew up playing instruments. Ezra started guitar when he was like three. He's just always played music. We all did choir stuff like that. Um, our parents really aren't musical, but. They raised us, like, they always had us doing, like, piano lessons or guitar lessons, yeah. things like that. So they really encouraged us to chase that and um, pursue music in our lives. Yeah. So it's been a really and they are incredible day. artists. Yeah. So we say, we say their, their artistry came out in us with music. <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting because I, I think that a lot of times when, when young adults or teenagers or kids uh, are in the music business, it's usually because their parents are musicians or very, very you know deeply rooted in the industry. So that's a, that's yeah. kind of a, an original spin on on the uh, you know the family the family family. <laughs> I, I, and I'll be honest, you hear more often than not of young artists that are kind of that their parents are prodding them along because they kind of want to fulfill totally. a dream that maybe they never acquired you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. And I, I, that was a really important thing I think with us just um, loving music so much is that I don't think we were ever made to to practice or made to take lessons it was always a choice and so that made us kind of want to fight for fight for this thing um, which I think yeah. is great and I think it continues on too like because if our mom and dad would have started off prodding us to like, hey, y'all should do this, then mm-hmm. it would have just died when they stopped. But <laughs> um, but uh, it's just because it was our dream, our desire, they were just kind of like, hey, 
you know, if you want to do it, go for it. We'll support you. We'll we'll drive you when you need to be driven and sell your merch. And and so, it, but it, it was a great, just a great way to start off. So what was what was that moment where the four of you decided, hey, you know what? We can do this, and you know we're capable, and we actually want to do it. What, what was that point where you guys are just, you know, siblings and musicians, kind of randomly learning? I guess at your own various rates, your different ages, you know, um, to where you go, you know, we're all good enough, we're all at a level where we can complement each other and become a real band. Well, so here's sort of how it kicked off: is uh, about well, in 2013, so it's been about six years since we've been doing this. Mm-hmm. We got approached to perform at a Relay for Life fundraiser. Ezra and I did, so the two oldest. And we were just kind of messing around on bluegrass. He just picked up banjo. So we were kind of, I just picked up guitar. So we were messing around on kind of bluegrass folk music. So some people asked us, hey, we all perform at this fundraiser. And we said, yes, of course, but we need more band members. So Liza came up and sang harmony with us. And Asa came up and played spoons. He was like eight or nine at the time. Uh-huh. We were all babies, for real. Like, it was when we see photos, we are very glad we're past those days. <laughs> Good memories, though. <laughs> so that was the first performance, and then honestly, it just snowballed from there, and more and more people kept asking us to perform at their music store openings or their school dances or whatever it was. So it's a little bit of an anticlimactic answer, but we never, like, there was never the dream to be like, all right, we're going to learn everything, we're going to learn how to songwrite, we're going to learn whatever, and we're going to become a band. It just honestly happened gradually and not specific there's not like a lightning bolt moment it sounds good to learn and grow out of necessity i mean if people are asking you to do gigs and you're like well we don't want to embarrass ourselves so let's uh you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is so yeah. true yeah. that is so true and we still think that like oh my gosh we need to get better at you know name the instrument because yeah. we're playing bigger and bigger shows yeah and this is uh we don't want to be embarrassed. <laughs> well, now let's talk about the songwriting because you guys do your own songwriting. What is the influence there? Uh, what is it that, that makes your sound, you know, Willow City? Yeah. Well, obviously the first thing is that we're family. So we have great harmonies naturally and we've never really, that's been kind of the, the I'd say the thing that we lean into most first because it's easiest and it, we've just all grown up singing together. And, and then also recently we've just been, Love. We listen to so much music. We grew up listening to music, and our influences are anywhere from, you know, Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack to growing up, we listened to a lot of bluegrass, Ricky Skaggs and Allison Krauss wow. Union Station, wow. and then, yeah, the Maverick, and, uh, and then today, it's any, you know, country, pop, it's, it's all over the place. But I say our sibling harmony really sets us apart. That's kind of the thing that we lean into. That, that I'd say separates us from the pack now. Well, very good, man. Now, we've been playing a couple of your songs, Hometown Sign and Rise of the Sun. So you guys have already recorded kind of an EP or a record. Um, give us the background on that that's out, and then I guess we'll get into the new stuff you're about to release as well, too. Um, so we released last uh, summer, so summer 2018, we released our first record as Willow City. Mm-hmm. Um, did really well. I mean, people supported it just amazingly. So I think it hit like top 15 on iTunes singer songwriter charts and just it totally blew our minds we weren't expecting anything like that so like we've mentioned we kind of grew up on bluegrass and folk and performed a lot of bluegrass and folk for a long time and then we wanted to rebrand and and uh, incorporate some more we love pop music mm-hmm. to be honest I know we're talking on a Uvalde radio station <laughs> hey, and uh, we play it all we're good <laughs> uh, yeah I know I love that I love that but um, we so we love and we love country, we love folk. So we want to just incorporate elements of pop into this sort of roots folk sound. Um, and so that that is what really built up the album last year. Um, and then, yes, Ezra has something to add. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, and then the new stuff, uh, we're really excited. We're working with a new producer um, who's, no, who's Grammy nominated, uh, and he, we're just, this is our first time working with him, and he's just amazing. And it's kind of cool because we've his name is Adam Palmer, and uh, we and he kind of was the first guy to he was he's in a super successful band, and he was the first guy to kind of take us under his wing and teach us the ropes to songwriting and and the music business. And so he was the first one to really just be like, hey, I, I'll kind of walk beside you guys and just give you tips when you need it. And so he's been a sounding board for probably two to three years and so to finally be able to get to work with them it's an amazing opportunity and this is 
this is his favorite project to work on, our favorite project that we've worked on. So it's just like, I feel like we've got the, both of, the best of both worlds and we're yeah. so excited for this music. We are super excited, yeah. So, so you got new music coming out soon. You've already got kind of a record out there. So everybody go find that, download it, you know, buy it, whatever you can. Yeah. I, I do, I've already gone at least 10 minutes into this interview and haven't mentioned yet. Uh, you guys are performing this weekend, Sunday afternoon, yeah. 2 to 5 p.m. at the Graf 7A Ranch in Hondo, Texas, which is just a, a fantastic family kind of atmosphere. They got the, they got the hay rides and the, uh, the corn maze and they've got like a pumpkin patch, live music in the dance barn. You guys are performing Sunday afternoon. Have you been to Graf 7A before? We haven't. We're not. Stoked to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so do you, do you guys? I mean, I'm sure you guys have played every kind of show, like fall festivals and and whatnot. What what, what is life on the road like for Willow City when you guys get in the bus and, and jump out Great there? Question. <laughs> um, okay, life on the road is is uh, really interesting because we have we drive around in a suburban in a trailer, <laughs> and uh, it uh, it's fun. It's as a family. Fun be crammed in the suburban. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. so I've, I've got a question. I've got a question for, was it, is it Liza yeah. or Lisa? So for the girl in the band, what is that like, you know, driving around with three dudes, you know, everywhere you go? Is it tough on you, lady? It is crazy. I try to keep them in line as best as possible. <laughs> They're super, super great brothers, though. And it's been really great being, um, like, being in such close quarters so much of the time. It's helped us to like get along so well and like really helped our communication so a lot of times where I'm like oh my gosh three boys all the time but it makes it a lot easier to um, when we're like almost forced to communicate in the band it really helps our relationships so it's been awesome I feel super super blessed being that you're siblings you're, you're all obviously you're all very close you know it, it seems like you guys just have it really together but I mean you're like in your family there has to be times when you don't agree when you have little fights do you do you guys do you just put that away when you get on stage? How does that work? I mean, and be honest. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like we have we have tried to incorporate a like hey, almost like you know yeah we all have separate you know we all have arguments at home and we all disagree on stuff. But when we get on stage and when we enter the business setting of yeah. music, we start to I, I feel like uh, throw away the the disagreements and try and work together really well and try and separate the, the home, the, the interaction at home from the interaction on the stage. And I feel like that's something that has really helped us to be able to, to entertain people um, and all work together really well. So, yeah. And you have to remember, you're all on the same team. Yeah. I mean, like, this goes for any... I'm honestly, I can't imagine having a band with someone other than your siblings. Yeah. It would be such a hot mess, I feel like. <laughs> but you have to remember, you're just on the same team. Yeah. And so, like, yeah, you got to fight well and fair. And and uh, disagreements aren't a bad thing because they can make you better. But at the end of the day, it's like, okay, we're all yeah. doing this to make each other better, make the band better. Definitely. And we're all on the same team. And, and also, so, being family, it really <laughs> it forces you to have, have to work things out really you know, really well. So. Well, yeah, I, I assume that, yeah, you've grown up with each other and you realize that, you know, yeah, I mean, a, a good, you, see, you guys sound like a fantastic family. Kudos to your parents, by the <laughs> way. Kudos. How about this? I, I read somewhere that you guys have done a few, um, I want to say like worship sessions or, you know, provided music for um, like church conferences and whatnot. Uh, is your faith important to you guys as a band? And uh, elaborate on that if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, absolutely. So this is as we're talking. And uh, I think, it's, it's such a cool opportunity that we've had growing up in the church and leading worship because that's how it's so funny. The more I'm in music, the more I realize like that's pretty. That's how like a huge majority of musicians start is just yeah. leading worship, playing in church, you know, mm -hmm. in the church band, um, and that's how we started. That's partially how we started too, just learning to play with other people, learning new songs. Yeah, and um, so you know, we're on the worship team at home. We're we travel and tour a bunch. So we're not home a lot of weekends, but when we are, we're always leading worship at church. And yeah. uh, we grew up uh, Christian, and we're still all walking and uh, walking the walk. And yeah, it just it plays a huge part. And I think you know, it's, as musicians, we do tour a bunch. We're on the road a lot. To have that as a as a foundation to kind of live off of, because there's it's so it's, there's so little routine mm -hmm. when you're on the road, and yeah. so. And, you know, everything is different. You're going, 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 going. Every, you, nothing is familiar. And to have that foundation 
um, of Christ, but also have each other around is so good just to have that Definitely. foundation. And, and obviously, that's like why we do everything that we do is just um, to share the light of Christ. You know, I've got a question for you guys, because this is a very kind of uh, current events kind of topic. You know, you've got Kanye West in the news. He's a, you know, a world renowned musician, uh, recently really, really gotten, you know, a vocal about his his uh, recent uh, faith in, in Christ and, and whatnot. Well, what's y'all's take on that whole thing? Oh, yes. Obviously, we have we're fans. No, but I think here's what's interesting is that um, I was watching an interview with him recently, and somebody asked him, you know, hey, what do you like if somebody comes to you and they're like Kanye? What like is it a real change? Is it a PR stunt? What's up? You know, and he his reply was great, and he was he just basically said like no one's beyond. God's love. Like, it doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, who you are. Jesus can reach into anybody's life. And so, I mean, who? it's really between him and God, if it's a real mm-hmm. thing. We don't know. But, I mean, on the outward appearance, in the outward appearance, it's, it's a cool, seems like a really cool thing. And just the fact that there is a record on the top charts that literally says yeah. Jesus <laughs> is king. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's a great record. Yeah, it's, it's so, so good. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Well, I'll give that a big amen too. Now we, we got to get into this now because you guys are actually—is uh, it—is it this weekend when it debuts? Uh, America's most musical family. Uh, yeah, yeah. So new Nickelodeon show. Apparently, from what I understand, like thirty different family, you know, m- musical families competing. You know, there's going to be judges. Give me the rundown on the big show. That sounds really cool. Okay, so Liza, you want to talk? No, you go. Okay, first. sorry, we're just trying to portion out the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, so it's uh, been a long process. They talked to us in March, um, and then we went through all the auditions and all this jazz for months, and then flew out and uh, did the show this summer in California. So basically, you're right. You summed it up perfectly. 30 families from around the world, all amazing musicians, um, and they... It's all a big... It's sort of a... It's a talent sort of singing competition. It's, it's, and it's, it's like the voice... Except uh, Nickelodeon's version. Right. So it's a basically, and it's so much fun because it's all family. So you get to just, oh my gosh, unbelievable musicians. And and incredible people, honestly. Just unbelievable people. So it airs every Friday night uh, in November, or every Friday night starting in November for the next while. Season's a couple months long, I think. And, um, yeah, so it's so much fun. It was a privilege to be a part and great, uh, great judges, great team that put it on so it it was such a cool cool thing i heard that debbie gibson's one of the judges I, you know i'm an old i'm older than y'all so debbie gibson she, <laughs> she's on my radar if you know what i'm saying so uh did you, did you guys get to interact with uh with debbie at all we did yeah yeah we did and she was so sweet and then uh, it was also cool because sierra an r&b artist great mm-hmm. winner was there as well david dobrik a youtuber and then it was real fun uh Nick Lachey from 98 Degrees is the host. Mm-hmm. So, um, and he was just, he's also in a band with his brother. Um, and so he was just, yeah. he just, was so great. Just awesome people. Everyone's so nice. And you just get to, you know, you see all these people up on stage and on TV and stuff. And, and they're just incredible, unbelievably nice people. Just genuine. On and off stage. Yeah, totally. Well, you know, I gotta say, I got really lucky talking to you guys right before you're making your big, huge television debut. <laughs> you know, I, I kind of got in. You know, I, I can literally, I can call this kind of, you know, the ground level here <laughs> because oh, because in a couple of weeks you guys are gonna be huge, man. That's insane. So, are, are your people? I'm sure you got people around you. Are they getting? Are they are they giving you advice? Are you getting geared up to to quite possibly blow up and be? A, I mean, a, a national if not worldwide name soon. Well, you know what's fun is that we have. We've really been surrounded with a lot of great music and business mentors. Yeah. And so, and the, and the uh, entertainment industry, just like a lot of other industries, is a very slow build. And it mm-hmm. can seem like, you know, you hear about these artists who, like, are 17 and they blow up overnight or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it can, comparison is such an easy game to play. And so, we've really focused on, a lot. I mean, our business mentors have really coached us to just, Focus on the slow growth potential. I mean, chances are it's not going to be an overnight, you know, million follower kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what's fun. I mean, we've literally we've played shows to ten people, and we've played shows to a thousand people. And so it's ten people. 
is very generous. <laughs> okay, one person. Um, but, you know, so it doesn't, as long, we're just so grateful for anybody who listens to the music and yeah. who comes to the shows, and whether it's one person or it's a thousand people. And um, so, anyway, it's, it's fun. We're not, we're not expecting an overnight meteoric rise. If it happens, fantastic. If not, we're going to keep plugging away and playing our music and slowly just, like, building our... Our friend base. Well, well, we're excited to have you guys still here in Texas, you know, at Hondo yes. oh, this yeah. Sunday afternoon, 2 to 5 p.m. at the Graf 7A Ranch. Now, if you're listening and you don't got your tickets yet, graf7aranch.com. And uh, Willow City is going to be out there. Go see them before the huge, big before the huge and blow up. <laughs> Become the next Kanye. Hey, huge because we're on your radio show. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but for those of us who have not seen you live yet, what can we expect for the live show? Oh. <laughs> you know, I think... Extremely energetic. <laughs> we are a party on yeah. stage. Um, and great harmonies. Um, good beats. Uh, good bass lines from Liza over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else, guys? We it's, just have we. Our focus is just to have a blast and, and to have and, everyone else have a blast. Yeah, too. pretty. So good. we just sing along and oh, uh, it's so fun. We just have a blast. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to go to the show, man. It's going to begin this Sunday afternoon, 2 o'clock, Graf 7A Ranch, Hondo, Texas, home of the South Texas uh, Maze, Big Corn Maze. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, man, I'll tell you what, you guys are remarkable young adults, man. So I, I feel like I'm just so honored and I feel really blessed to have been able to talk to you guys for a few minutes here. Uh, we're really excited about, you know, this career that's just Thank blossoming. Uh, so, yeah, you guys are making Texas proud already. So uh, God bless you guys so much. Let's go ahead and do your new single. You guys were kind enough to get it to me, I guess, kind of technically a little bit early. Uh, it's it's called Ghosts. Yeah. Anybody want to talk about Ghosts? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll talk about Ghosts. Uh, this is Ezra. So I wrote the song uh, a couple months ago, and um, it's uh, drawing from my own experiences as a young single dude. Um, it's, the dating world is crazy out there, and there's a lot of heartbreak, and there's a lot of just crazy emotions that go on. And so um, I wrote that song about kind of going through some heartbreak and then meeting somebody new and and you're saying but i and it was funny because as i was writing the song i was frustrated because i couldn't i couldn't get any ideas and so i was like ah forget this i'm gonna go take a nap because <laughs> naps stick to everything right and so uh i woke up from my nap and i had this line going through my mind uh i'm not angry or bitter or jealous and so I was like, ooh, that's good. So then I uh, I went down to my studio and I wrote this song. And it was the first time that I felt like, wow, I felt some, I felt an emotion. And I, I wrote this song and it says exactly what I was feeling and exactly what I wanted to say. And then Liza uh, ended up singing the lead track. And um, she just absolutely killed it. She was yeah. amazing. So. I have an, a, a small asterisk. Okay. My studio... That would be our <laughs> art studio. That would be our studio. <laughs> yeah. So, Ghost, yeah, this will come out, out uh, November 14th. Well, right on. Well, we got it right here, right now. Again, it's Willow City. See them Sunday. Hondo, Graph 7A Ranch. We're going to call this a Southwest Texas premiere debut. All right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. So, this is Willow City. It's Ghost, and this is Uvalde Radio. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Robert. My best friend's falling in and I'm proud of them, but I can't help but feel envy bleeding in my mind. When we just met, you took my heart and you opened it before the feeling starts. Something I think you should know. I'm not. Jealous, but I need some time. 
I've got my goal. 